am Michael Piercy, an epidemiologist working with a large Native American tribe in Oklahoma. Today, I will be discussing changes in the cycles of infectious, vector-borne disease that may be linked to changes in the global climate. Vector-borne diseases are transmitted typically by the bite of an infected arthropod. The arthropod could be something very familiar to us, such as a mosquito, tick, or fly. Or it might be a less familiar species, such as an African tsetse fly or copepod. These arthropods that carry and transmit disease are known as vectors. Other non-arthropod vectors can include rodents, such as rats, certain bats, and several species of wild birds. Different vectors carry different diseases, such as malaria, dengue, encephalitis, African sleeping sickness, and yellow fever. Vector-borne diseases are caused by pathogens, such as bacteria or viruses, that are often transmitted by insect vectors, such as ticks or mosquitoes. These diseases are interesting to study because they require a cycle of pathogen-host interaction that leads to human infection. Successful infection requires the presence of a susceptible host, a competent vector, and virulent pathogens interacting in an appropriate environment. The rapid growth of the human population and the incursion of people into previously rarely encountered parts of the world have exposed humans to new and ancient pathogens that historically have been isolated from mankind. Vector-borne diseases such as Ebola hemorrhagic fever, Rift Valley fever, West Nile encephalitis, and Japanese encephalitis fall into this category. In addition to increased contact between virulent pathogens and naive hosts, the climate has a direct impact on the ability of the vector-borne disease cycle to result in an outbreak. An abundance of vectors and hosts directly affects the rate of disease, as does an increase in temperature or a change in seasonality. Increased temperature affects the reproductive, biting, and survival rates of vectors and the pathogens contained within. Higher temperatures result in longer seasons of activity for the vectors and an increased spread of disease. Increased rainfall also has a strong impact on vectors, such as mosquitoes that require an aquatic reproductive phase. Increased humidity can also stimulate the activity of vectors, such as the species of ticks that carry Lyme disease. According to a study published by the World Health Organization in 2015, the global geographic distribution of vector-borne diseases is changing rapidly due to factors such as climate change, intensive farming, dams, irrigation, deforestation, population movement, rapid unplanned urbanization, and increases in international travel and trade. There is evidence that the geographic range of ticks and mosquitoes that carry disease has changed in response to climate change. While future climate change is expected to continue to alter the distribution of disease vectors, it is important to recognize that there are several other factors, such as land use, population density, and human behavior that can also change the distribution of disease and the extent of infection. In response to this problem, health and climate researchers are looking at ways to measure health vulnerability to climate change and to estimate the potential scale of the issue. They are studying health protection strategies and the health impact of potential adaptation and mitigation measures. Research in this field must be matched with health policy planning and stronger relationships must be formed between current health programming and the modeling of future scenarios of vector-borne disease.